بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام الأتمان الأكملان على خير خلق الله أجمعين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My dearest friends, my dearest viewers Welcome to our series on the final destination My name is Tawfiq Chaudhary Inshallah, in these series of lectures I will be taking you on a journey to our final destination that is either going to be paradise inshallah ta'ala or the wretched hellfire I have tried to make these series as informative as pleasant as touching as energizing as emotional and moving as possible so I hope that inshallah you listen to what I have to present to you today with an open heart inshallah ta'ala and away from distractions so that inshallah ta'ala the benefit of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that of his messenger truly touch your heart and reach its true purpose that is to remind us of our final destination and to ultimately bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my dearest friends there is a, a central theme that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives in numerous verses of the Quran and upon the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the theme is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala despite the fact that he has given us so many of his signs, so many of his ayat within ourselves and in his creation despite the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us of the fact that he exists and of the fact that one day we will have to meet him that we in playful haste we just turn away despite this fact my friends despite the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us so many signs we do not take heed we do not change we don't remember the fact that we will have to die go down into the belly of the grave we don't think about the first day where we will actually go down and meet our fate we forget this fact and because of this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us again and again in the Quran and he says the hisab of mankind has come near whilst they are in a state of playfulness turning away from Allah there does not come to them a remembrance from their Lord a new type of remembrance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except that they hear this and then they turn away so my friends why is it that human beings are so weak why is it that we hate to talk about death why is it that whenever we are reminded of death that we forget to you know ponder and to take heed from this what is the central issue the central problem well Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a reason and he tells us that وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفَ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had originally created mankind weak he also tells us that وَكَانَ insanu qatura verily mankind is miserly he also said وَكَانَ insanu ajula verily mankind is always in haste also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa kan al insanu kafura and verily mankind always disbelieves whenever there is a verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given to him you know he tends to disbelieve he tends to think in his heart that no have some sort of doubt or have some sort of problem with it and so this is how mankind in general of course this is how mankind in general is and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran wa kan al insanu akthara shay'in jadala and mankind is always given unto arguments so all of these characteristics of being miserly of being in haste of being weak of being someone that rejects the truth wallahi this leads us into a state of ghafla a state of forgetfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a state where we forget to think and remember about the fact that we will have to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without a translator another point that the Quran and the Sunnah make is that the hereafter al-akhira in Arabic comes from the word al-akhir which means next whereas the word dunya meaning the world of this life comes from the word dana which means to come closer and to come near so it is very natural therefore for a human being who is created weak and given unto his emotions and to his desires to remember that which is close to him and that which he is immersed in which is this world rather than the hereafter which will come later on which will be in akhir which is thereafter and so because of these reasons my friends we are given unto forgetting the hereafter forgetting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whereas every single person today looking at this series or any Muslim out there must ask himself this important question that question is how much do you think the value of this world is in the scale of the hereafter truthfully truthfully my friends how much value do you give to this world in the scale of the hereafter what is the value that this world has in your heart compared to the value of the hereafter 
in your heart. And wallahi, by Allah, by your answer to this question, you will know the answer to how much you struggle for this deen. By your answer to this question, you will know how much you love Allah and His Messenger. By your answer to this question, you will know how many sins you do. By your answer to this question, you will know how many good deeds you have amassed for the Akhirah. My friends, this is a central point. This is a central point. What is the value of this world in your heart in the scale of the hereafter? I remember a narration that Ibrahim al Ash'ad, one of the pious scholars of the past, he mentioned that he heard Al Fudail ibn Iyad, who was one of the great scholars of the past, say that truly mankind's fear of Allah is equal to his knowledge of Him. Mankind's fear of Allah is equal to his knowledge of Him. And mankind's rejection of the life of this world is equal to his love of the hereafter. So ask yourself, how much do you truly love the hereafter? By that answer will be your rejection of the life of this world. What I'm not asking you to do, my friends, is to shun the world. What I'm asking you to do is to shun worldliness. And there is a very large difference between the two. Rasulullah married, he ate food, he was a merchant, he earned and he traded, but he was never attached to it. He was never attached to it. When he gave money away, he gave it away knowing that more would come, knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the throne, would never let him go hungry. And so it is this understanding that we should have, this detachment from the world, that yes, we may be living in it, so we may not be shunning the world itself, but what we shun is attachment, with the hearts being attracted and so bound to this world, that is what we would term as worldliness, and that is what we would reject, and that is what we would shun. It is also for this reason why a scholar by the name of Amr ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu, a great scholar of the past, he mentioned in a very beautiful narration from him, he said that the value of this world and the value of the hereafter in the heart of a believer are like two scales of a balance. If one of the scales become heavier, the other one becomes lighter. Wallahi, what a beautiful statement. What a beautiful way to illustrate this fact. That truly, the more you are attracted to this world, the less you are attracted to the hereafter. The more you value this world, the less you value the hereafter. My dearest viewers, let me give you a very quick example and a test so that you can also see for yourself how much you truly value the life of this world in the scale of the hereafter. Sufyan al-Thawri, rahimahullah, he used to say in a very beautiful statement, mankind's love of this world is shown by the way he greets people. By the way he greets people. So ask yourself, when a rich person comes to visit your home, how do you greet him? And when a poor person comes to visit your home, how do you greet him? When a rich person comes to visit your home, do you prepare a lot of food? Do you prepare the best of your food? Do you prepare more than one or two or three or four dishes, for example? and you beautify your whole home because you know that this is a rich person coming to your home and compare this to when a poor person comes to visit your home do you only prepare one type of dish or two or three only and then you treat him in a very different manner you don't beautify your homes for example you greet him in a different way in this way is our value of the hereafter what a beautiful way inshallah ta'ala we're going to go for a break so don't go away and we will continue right after the break inshallah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh what does dawah mean? How do we call people to Islam? Why should we give dawah? If there is a God, how come there's so much suffering on earth? Aren't all religions the same? Why should I follow yours? Why does Islam oppress women? If you have the time, we have the inclination. Join us for our fascinating series with me, Abdurrahim Green here on Peace TV. Expand your awareness to spread Islam in Dava tonight at 11:30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 6 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. He faces. He listens. 
My question is about the beard, about Imam Mahdi. What are the people believing? He answers, So number one is the help of Allah. He satisfies in the light of glorious Quran and authentic Hadith. If Allah helps you, believe me, you have to get success. Catch Dr. Zakir. Then we have the next call, please. To get convincing and valid answers in Dial Dr. Zakir every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9.30 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. Pearls of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Narrated Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him. The Prophet, may peace be upon him, said, There are two blessings which many people lose. They are health and free time for doing good. Sahih Al-Bukhari, Volume 8, Book of Softening of Hearts, Hadith Number 6412. Students of Islamic International School, Showcase on eve of the IIS annual day event. Welcome you to the grand finale of the Islamic International School. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Performances par excellence. Recitations so mysterious. Man finds means for momentary pleasure when I am with him and goes astray. <laughs> they are the enemy, so beware of them. Watch these cool kids impress and uplift your hearts, your minds, and your iman. With Allah's help, this will be a memorable event. Wiz Kids, next on Peace TV. Welcome back. My dearest viewers, let me give you a very quick example and a test so that you can also see for yourself how much you truly value the life of this world in the scale of the hereafter. Sufyan al-Thawri, rahimahullah, he used to say in a very beautiful statement, mankind's love of this world is shown by the way he greets people. By the way he greets people. So ask yourself, when a rich person comes to visit your home, how do you greet him? And when a poor person comes to visit your home, how do you greet him? When a rich person comes to visit your home, do you prepare a lot of food? Do you prepare the best of your food? Do you prepare more than one or two or three or four dishes, for example, and you beautify your whole home because you know that this is a rich person coming to your home? And compare this to when a poor person comes to visit your home, do you only prepare one type of dish or two or three only, and then you treat him in a very different manner? You don't beautify your homes, for example. You greet him in a different way. In this way is our value of the hereafter. What a beautiful way. My friends, truly, truly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran and he says in a very beautiful verse, Zuyina lin nasi hubbu shahawat. It has been made beautiful to mankind. The love of the shahawat, of the desires. Minan nisa, from the women. Wal banin, and from children. Wal qanatir al muqantarati min al dhahabi wal fiddha. And heaped up hordes of gold and silver. والقناطير المقنطرة من الذهب والفضة والخيل المسومة والأنعام والحرف and horses and steeds beautified steeds and beautified horses with saddles and أنعام and cattle والحرف and cultivation ذلك متاع الحياة الدنيا these are the distractions or fleeting pleasures of this world والله عنده حسن المآب and with Allah سبحانه وتعالى is the everlasting abode my dearest friends, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Qur'an as well, Know, O oh mankind, know, O oh people, verily the life of this world is a passing distraction. La'ib is a game, walahu, and a fleeting distraction. And a boasting amongst you. And a competition between yourselves in order to see who is the richest and who is the poorest. 
And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the example. He says, كَمَثَلِ غَيْثٍ أَعْجَبَ الْكُفَّارَ نَبَاتُهُ ثُمَّ يَحِيجُ فَتَرَاهُ مُصْفَرَّ ثُمَّ يَكُونُ حُطَامًا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ عَذَابٌ شَدِيدٌ وَمَغْفِرَةٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانٌ وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the example of a rain that falls upon a barren piece of earth. Because of the rain, suddenly crops grow out of the earth and it pleases the farmers. And suddenly, as soon as it pleases the farmers, then the rain stops. And because the rain stops, suddenly destruction returns back to the earth again. Suddenly the crops are no more. Suddenly the crops that were so luscious and green, suddenly now they've dried up and withered out and now they are no more. It is this example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives of the life of this world. That truly the life of this world and its pleasures are this fleeting pleasure. Suddenly you have this little amount of pleasure for a very limited amount of time. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years only as a maximum and then thereafter it is no more. You go down to the grave and you have nothing that you have taken with you. Wallahi, you have not taken your wealth with you, you have not taken your position, your status with you. The kings of this earth have now gone down to the grave and they are no more. My friends, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us these examples and then he tells us, وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ dunya." And what is the life of this world? إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ Except a fleeting pleasure, except a fleeting distraction, except a temporary distraction from the true life, from the true journey, the true adventure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for every human being. It is for this reason I remember a very beautiful statement that one of the pious predecessors used to mention. They mentioned a very beautiful statement and they said that beware of the magic of this world. They said beware of the magic of this world. For truly the magic of this world is more stronger than the magic of Harut and Marut. What are they referring to? Harut and Marut were those two angels. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Baqarah, these were two angels who were sent to Babylon and there were two angels that taught man how to do black magic. The point is that the great scholar in Islam, he mentioned, beware of the magic of this world, but truly the magic of this world is more stronger than the magic of Harut and Marut. Whereas the magic of Harut and Marut would separate a man from his wife, the magic of this world separates a man from his Lord. Truly what an amazing statement. The magic of this world is so strong, my friends. The distractions and the desires of this world is so strong that it can easily take a man away from his creator. The thing that we're most certain of, that the magic of this world is so strong that it can even take us away from that. So what is the value of this world, my friends, in the true scale of the hereafter? Well, Rasulullah gave us some examples and let me pass these examples on to you perhaps that so we may estimate this life and our life in this world with a correct estimation. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in that beautiful hadith once he was passing by a donkey and the donkey was dead and this was in Medina of course in a part of the market of Medina the donkey was dead so he was lying down on the ground just in front of him and the donkey was dead it had very long ears it had a lot of bees a lot of flies buzzing over it and there was a filthy smell that was coming out of the donkey at that point Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa looked at the donkey then he turned to his companions and he said, who amongst you will buy this donkey for at least one dirham? And a dirham is a silver piece of coin. At that point, the companion said, Ya Rasulullah, we would not buy this donkey even if you gave it to us for free. Even if you gave it to us for free, look at it. Wallahi, it is dead. And secondly, it is smelly. And thirdly, it has looked ugly. And thirdly, it has begun to decompose. And so why would we even take it? We could not benefit from it, even from its skin. So at that point, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, by the one in whose hands is my soul, this world is more worthless in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than this donkey in your sight. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. This world is more worthless in the sight of Allah than this donkey in our sight. Have you not heard, oh my friends, the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu which is authentic in Tirmidhi, that Rasulullah sallallahu said, the life of this world, if Allah had given any value to it, then he would not have given the disbeliever even a sip of water to drink. Allah would not have given the disbeliever this amount of water. And subhanAllah, this hadith illustrates to us how much value this life truly has, which is very little. Meaning that this life has little or even lesser value than the wing of a fly in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take another example. Rasulullah said in authentic hadith in Sahih Muslim, he said, the life of this world compared to the hereafter is like if one of you were to dip his finger into the ocean, how much would come out of it? 
Subhanallah, what a beautiful hadith. Dip your finger in the ocean and then take it out. How much water would come out on your finger? And not only that, but as soon as you take your finger out of the water, it will dry up. And this is exactly how the life is. Very insignificant in the comparison to the hereafter. And on top of that, not only that, it also dries up. Not only that, but it also dries up. One of the most important reasons, my friends, that we fail to remember the value of this world and the scale of the hereafter is because we think that we have guaranteed Jannah or that because we're Muslimin, somehow or the other, we will ultimately, Allah will have mercy on us and ultimately we'll be able to say the Shahada before we die. But we forget the story of Pharaoh, who was unable to say the Shahada upon his death. He led a life of sin and transgression and when the waters were about to crush him down, at that point he said, I believe in the Lord of Harun and Musa, which is exactly what many of us are trying to do would lead a life of sin and transgression and of not praying and not fasting and not giving in charity and then we expect that on the day of judgment or just before we die we will say la ilaha illallah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala somehow out of his mercy will have mercy on us but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala noticed he never accepted the tawheed or the kalima the statement or the shahada of Firaun at the time of his death because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran Al-an wa qad asayta qablu wa kunta min al-kafirin Now if around, now you believe Whereas before that you used to disbelieve and used to be from those who used to turn away from my signs So Allah never accepted that And so this incident is a great indication of the fact that truly, truly If we lead a life of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Then we cannot expect to be from the ones who Allah will bless us with the shahada and an acceptable shahada at the time of our death. Truly there is a statement that we must always remind ourselves with. And that is what Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah had said. Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah, he had said in a beautiful statement, Hal abkaka ilmullahi fiqh? Has the knowledge of Allah about you ever made you cry? Has the knowledge of Allah about you ever made you cry? What is he referring to? The fact that Allah knows whether you are from the people of Jannah or you are from the people of Jahannam. The fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already decreed this, does this fact not ever make you cry? Because you don't know, are you from the people of Jannah or are you from the people of Jahim? And once Malik bin Dinar, عنه, he, remember, he remembered this issue that truly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken a group of people and he created a group of individuals for Jannah and another group of individuals for the Jahannam. And at that time, he actually stood up in prayer and he would grab his beard with his hands in this manner and he would say, Oh Allah, I know that you have created two groups of people, one for Jannah and one for the Jaheem. Oh Allah, by your greatness and your glory, tell me, oh Allah, from which group am I from? From which group am I from? My brothers and sisters Islam, do not fool yourselves. My brothers and sisters Islam, do not fool yourselves. Wallahi, take the message of the Quran and Sunnah, take the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to not be attached to this world seriously because it is a fleeting pleasure. My dearest friends, I did not mention these verses of the Quran or these ahadith of Rasulullah all these statements of the pious predecessors to actually cause you grief. Wallahi, I didn't do it for that reason. I only did it so that I could illustrate to you how important and how serious this matter truly is. And I remind you that once Rasulullah also felt sometimes detached from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Initially when he got the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there was a period of about six months in which Rasulullah did not receive any revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At that point he felt anxious, he felt very worried, he felt or he thought that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had forgotten him or that did not want him any longer. And perhaps you may be feeling like that since the last time you had that link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may have been a long time ago. At that point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed a beautiful verse in the Quran, وَالضُّحَى وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى By the morning brightness and by the night as it envelops. مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَى Allah has not forgotten you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, nor has he overlooked your affairs. So my friends, Allah has not forgotten you. Allah has not forgotten you, nor has He overlooked your affairs. He's merely waiting patiently so that you return back to Him. He is merely waiting patiently, and there is no one more patient than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is waiting patiently for you to get over this period of your life, of this ghafla, and this, this period of forgetfulness in your life, and to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, my friends, I remind you and remind you of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I end this series with a statement of Sufyan al Thawri rahimullah. When he said in that beautiful statement, Wallahi, I would not prefer my parents over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a judge over me on the day of judgment. Why? Because truly, truly by Allah, I know that my Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves me and is more merciful to me than my own parents. Allahu Akbar.
It is with this belief and with this conviction that we should return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until next time as we continue on our journey to the hereafter, our final destination. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. For so many years you've been pestering me, whispering and snickering in my ear. Oh, shaitan, I'm gonna throw you down, throw you down right into the ground. On this blessed day you pale and weak, hiding in the corner filled with grief. Cause people come a marching, praising Allah, casting you right out of their hearts. Oh, shaitan, I'm gonna throw you down. Throw you down right into the ground. Oh, Shaitan, I'm gonna throw you down. Throw you down right into the ground. You've been causing trouble since time began. A snake in the garden, you tricked the first man. Oh, Shaitan, I'm gonna throw you down. Throw you down right into the ground. MashaAllah, JazakAllah khair. JazakAllah khair. Hey kids, time is very precious. This life is a gift from Allah. Utilize this gift for here and hereafter. Enjoy this gift in the light of the Quran and Hadith. Enjoy Islam with us, Zain and Dawood. Enjoying Islam with Zain and Dawood tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 10.30 p.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV.